Greg Papa, the voice of the San Francisco 49ers, talking uh, about a uh, sad development on this October first week. Uh, there was the news that came out overnight that the longtime 49er uh, great Russ Francis, part of those great 49er teams, uh, passed away in a plane crash. And uh, his, I guess, goes without saying, this is a guy whose legacy in 49er lore is 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 firmly cemented without a doubt robert it breaks my heart um you know what, what a character too i remember his early career with the new england patriots and he was uh he was the george kittle kind of his time he was a uh, the inline y tight end they didn't do a lot of detaching tight ends back then until kevin winslow went to went to san diego um but they he was a patriot to start his career with jim plunkett and that group and the 49ers got him middle of his career, he wound up missing the entire 81 season. And we thought he retired. He was an eclectic guy. He was just kind of out there. And I remember he was, uh, did a lot of skydiving and jumping out of airplanes. And, and Bill Walsh was a little concerned about that. But I think they just let Russ be Russ. And he did his thing. And then he had so many big moments in, in big games. And like Kittle, a complete tight end, good inline blocker, but also could run routes and, and separate. And, uh, you know, the play the 49ers ran last year in Seattle, they call it the Hollywood play, where it's a fake screen left, fake screen right, throw over the middle to George Kittle. The 49ers ran that play in the Super Bowl uh, at Stanford, Palo Alto, when it was Joe Montana against Dan Marino. And the fake screen left, fake screen wide, right, and they wide delay, it's called, because the inline tight end blocks, then he goes out. That was to Russ Francis. And um, just had so many big moments and was able to, to win a, a Super Bowl with the Niners. And uh, they had a great history of tight ends before Russ. Ted Qualick was one of the greats in Niners history before they got Russ Francis. But Russ was the first on the Super Bowl winning teams. Then you got into Dr. John Frank, remember him. And then from Santa Clara, uh, the great Brent Jones was in for a couple of Super Bowls. But uh, before Kittle, before Brent Jones, it was, it was Russ Francis. Then you also talk about how uh, off the field he was eclectic, and obviously yeah. you and I were, uh, were were schooled by the great Bill King as far as the living an eclectic life away from the field outside of the game. Uh, and I, the thing I thought about with those 49er teams, I mean, it, it was obviously unheard of for some of the stars of your team, let alone you know your Super Bowl winning team, to be a uh, you know to to do any of this kind of crazy stuff, let alone it be a backup. Uh, backup singers to Huey Lewis and the news, right? I mean, maybe that was right. kind of the influence in, in, in having some of these outside interests be okay. Well, they all, you know, in one song, you know, hip, hip, hip to be square. The, the, the Niners are the backup singers on that, including Joe Montana. So Huey Lewis had such a great part of, you know, Niner lore back then singing the anthem for all the big games. But for Russ, and it's kind of, you know, as we mourn his passing, and dying in a airplane crash. That's what he was, to me, it was the, the skydiving that he did. And Bill Walsh questioned that. And they, you know, I think they were worried about him getting hurt. And I think he told Coach Walsh, you know, if I, if I don't make it coming out of that airplane, I'm not going to wreck a knee and not be able to play for you on Sunday. It's going to be a lot worse than that. So it was just who he was. So I think they, there was a little bit of a yin and yang, the full commitment to playing football but that if you wanted Russ Francis to be Russ Francis on Sunday Robert you had to let him be who he was on Monday through Saturday and back then you know he had fun but I think that was you know Dwight Clark wasn't home drinking drinking warm milk before games either and neither was Joe those guys were having fun so it was just kind of that that generation of player in the 70s and 80s but that's why when I first heard of his passing and the nature of his death in an aviation mishap you know that's the first thing i thought of was was russ francis being a skydiver and the niners kind of had to just let him be russ to, to play on sunday but what a great player again kittle's the the best you know pure tight end blocking and getting out in pattern making tough catches over the middle but before he had george kittle he had russ francis uh finally talking about i don't know how much he was around the team maybe he came he still came around to be part of the uh the anniversary celebration teams uh, that they have the ceremonies for 
from year to year. How much did you see him around uh, the new you know, stadium? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember him coming around at all. I, I'd never been in his company. It was strictly observing him from afar. He was a good-looking guy. I mean, Russ Francis kind of had that Tom Selleck kind of look, um, just a rugged guy, pure football player. And um, no, I like Tom Selleck copied his mustache, right? I mean, uh, I think that may have been it with a tiger no, hat yes. instead of a 49er helmet <laughs> or a Patriot helmet. But um, and he actually went back to New England after his time here. So he was one of those guys. He was just a man's man kind of guy. But I never they do come around, obviously, quite a bit. We saw a lot of Dwight Clark and Joe's around periodically and Ronnie Lott, you know, lives here. But I never had the privilege of meeting the great Russ Francis. I would have loved to have hung with him, had a couple of pints or whatever we were drinking, uh, maybe Gold Bar Whiskey, the official whiskey of the Niners, and uh, just listen to him tell old stories because he was a great storyteller.